and it's the doctors up here and the patients down here. And that conversation really needs to get flipped so it's horizontal and so that there are, uh, there is much more inclusion uh, of all of the, all sides in that conversation. And I think in the testimony that we've heard in this room over, the, over this bill over the last several weeks uh, or months, I can't remember how long it's been, but I, I think that that conversation speaks to that, to the, to that problem. Uh, and uh, I, <clears throat> I have a couple of other issues with the bill that I, I wish it, it, it would include everybody in that conversation. I'm a little challenged by distinguishing between religion and philosophy. I think that's a, that's a pretty, pretty uh, sketchy area for me. Uh, and I'd rather have it, I would rather have it all, all in. Um, and the other area where, where I'm concerned is, uh, frankly, around my, my friends at Big Pharma, who I, you know, I watch TV, I watch those ads where you come out in the first five seconds of the ad tells you what the miracle that the drug can do, and the next 45 seconds is all the possible side effects, including uh, diarrhea, diphtheria, and, and death in some circumstances. So I mean, I, that, and it does. These are the same folks that are bringing us the, 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 the vaccines, and I, and I hope uh, that the the real challenge there is uh, uh, to make sure that the quality of that conversation goes goes horizontal, and that the that the the listening goes both ways in that conversation so that so that the medical folks are hearing from the consumers what those what those concerns are and uh, and that we come out of this somebody described earlier to me that this this bill is a is a is planting a, a first stone in a path or a next stone in the path and uh, that resonates for me I understand that but but the direction of the, the stone after that uh, is, uh, it, that gets placed after that is really important. And I think that, that's, uh, the, the, that is a challenge to everybody that's involved in that equation. Uh, so i am maybe gone on long enough, but I'm going to vote for it, not without some, some uh, uh, trepidation. It's not trepidation. It's it's like not without some very high expectations on the people who have been here in this room on several occasions now arguing both sides of this issue. I, I hope that engagement stays at the intensity level that it has been here in this room and that the outcome of it is something that is a positive one. And uh, because if it isn't, then it won't be me because I probably won't be here, but, but you'll be back. So if it, if, it, if it doesn't happen, I think, I think that, the, that Representative Sanborn's bill gives us a chance to, to start that next round of that conversation. And I hope everybody here on both sides uh, will embrace it that way. And with that, I'll step on that first stone and uh, thank the, thank the uh, originator of that uh, uh, image for me. So. I'll, I'll, I'll I'll just say I, I, I intend to oppose the motion before us um, for a number of reasons. Uh, first, I think that um, a repeated refrain we heard in the in the public testimony on this, and that really resonated with me and stuck with me, is this idea that when there's risk, there must be choice. And I think this bill, though to a lesser extent than the bill that we're going to be considering after this, I think this begins to encroach on that area of choice for parents and for parents to make choices about what goes into their, their children's bodies. Um, it was I it was it was interesting to see in the discussion of all, all of this that um, while there seemed to be that the argument about the cost benefit of of, of vaccinations, um, it seems that when we talked, when the discussion was about risk, there was disagreements about maybe the extent of the risk, but it seemed like there was universal agreement from 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 the doc, from doc, medical professionals on both sides that there is at least some, 
can be some risk involved um, to, uh, to, predict, to, to some people. And I'm very uncomfortable kind of pushing, pushing a, a decision like that on, um, you know, when there, when there is risk, there should be choice. Um, in addition to that, you know, I, I, we've heard people say, and I think this was said on both of the bills, this bill and the next bill we're going to be considering, that this wouldn't, um, this doesn't prohibit anyone from doing anything. We're not forcing people to do something. We just wouldn't let them attend public schools if they don't uh, uh, comply with this. So I, I just makes me wonder, you know, okay, so where's the voucher that we're going to give these, these parents who uh, are uncomfortable complying with this? I mean, uh, are, are Unless we're, I can't, I can't see how we could just by saying that this isn't, we're not forcing decision on people unless we're offering to give them a voucher or give them a refund of their of their property taxes that they paid in order to attend public school. Um, so, so there's that. And furthermore, I think a lot of this conversation was based on the premise that we had this very high opt out rate of over five percent. But I'm seeing that, at least the numbers I'm seeing, that this number has been revised down to less than four percent. Um, we're really talking, I guess the numbers I have right in front of me is 3.69%. Um, and the kindergarten vaccination rates, at least at least for the state overall, seem, for the most part, seem to be well above the, the tipping point thresholds for um, what we're told the tipping point or herd immunity thresholds is for, for many of these diseases. So while maybe we can isolate individual schools and say this school here, this school here isn't isn't uh, above that, um, but we're talking about statewide policy. We're not talking about policies for individual schools. Um, so I, I I really have I really have concerns about that. It's, it seems like some of the numbers that this premise on seem to I, I think just through just through human error. I don't I, I don't think there's any anything intentional about it. But I think just through human error, I think some of the numbers that we were operating with in this initial discussion come back as being um, less, you know, not as uh, not as significant as we were initially suspected. And furthermore, when there are individuals who are counted in this number of 3.69 percent who uh, could be fully vaccinated except for one vaccine that their parent may be uncomfortable with, we're not talking. We're not necessarily talking about in, uh, uh, individuals who are absolutely not vaccinated in any particular way. So even that, I guess, I question the 3.69 percent on, you know, if there was any way to see, kind of see a breakdown of, you know, um, you know, I guess I wonder how that number further breaks down, um, and how many are we, how many people in that 3.69 percent are we actually talking about who are completely unvaccinated or are. Um, so those are, those are my those are my concerns. Why I I've, I've talked long enough. I'm, I'm I intend to oppose the uh, the motion and I've spoken as to why. So uh, any additional discussion on the motion before us, Representative Gatine. I'm I'm, I'm I'm I can officially sign on to somebody's remarks. I would sign on to Representative. Stuckey's, uh, the only thing I, again, I want to add, you know, is, is um, to me, this is primarily a public health issue. Uh, the vaccines that we require are designed not simply to protect the children that are vaccinated, but to protect other children. Um, I believe that I support the philosophical exemption. Um, you know, we are facing a, an outbreak of a crisis, to be honest. I, I, I might have to re-examine that. Position, but but I, I support the philosophical exemption. I, I, I think it's important for people to focus carefully on what this bill requires and what this bill adds. And, and you know, this is not intended to be a veto of a parent's determination uh, that they want to claim the philosophical exemption. Um, and, and, and frankly, I don't think that this bill adds a very high bar uh, uh, for parents that want to do that. I think we need to support parents, right, to have that ability and to understand the way the risks, because there are risks in every medical procedure and, and other things that we do in life, and I think that parents have the right to, to, to weigh those risks. Um, but I think this is an important step to make sure that, uh, uh, you know, important conversations happen with respect to something that, again, doesn't just protect the child being vaccinated, but other children in the community. So, 
Additional discussion, Representative Stuckey. And just, just one other comment. We, we've had a, a conversation uh, in this room recently, too, about uh, palliative care and the shift in focus and the relationships between uh, patients and doctors. And uh, I, that's an encouraging sign. <coughs> uh, but, and the, but the one caution I guess I have, and I don't know what to, to do about it, is uh, what we're talking about takes, is going to take time. And, uh, it, you know, in some ways, time is unfortunately money in the world of medicine. And I, I guess one of the things I'm going to want to understand as this rolls out, if it does, is what is the, is there, do we need to be looking at insurance in a way that allows for conversations like this or the palliative care conversation to be co a, a covered cost? Or are we, are we setting ourselves up for failure by not addressing, addressing that issue? It's not part of this bill, I understand that, and I'm not trying to make it part of it. But it, does, it is something that, that uh, if, I'm, if I'm putting my faith in, the, in moving this ahead in a conversation, and then that turns out that that conversation, because of money, can't happen, I, I think we've missed something. So I don't know what that was worth, but it flew through my head. So I appreciate it, Senator, that opportunity. Seeing no additional discussion, then. Without objection, we will take a vote. All in favor of the motion of ought to pass, please raise your hand. All opposed? LD-606, this is an act to remove the philosophical exemption from the immunization requirement for school students and employees of nursery schools and healthcare facilities. Uh, is there any discussion or is there a motion that would be proposed? Uh, yes, Representative Peterson. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I move on not to pass. Been moved and seconded by Representative Peterson and uh, Representative Sanderson, uh, seconded. Uh, on on to pass in LD 606. Is there any discussion? Seeing no discussion, we'll take a vote. All in favor of the motion on on to pass, please raise your hand. Alright, it's a unanimous vote. Um, we will now take up LD 1076, an act to enact the Vaccine Consumer Protection Program. And so during, during uh, as I was walking the committee through this initial um, analysis, I, I skipped over, um, there are two amendments, uh, proposed amendments um, to LD 1076. Um, one, was uh, that are a part of this packet. The one is in the, is in yellow, uh, the yellow sheet, and that was um, submitted by Miss Ginger Taylor. And um, in, when she submitted it, the changes were in red, and um, we're not able to print in color. And so I underlined the areas that were in red, and so um, so the changes to the initial bill are, are underlined on the yellow sheet. And then um, there was also a proposed amendment submitted by the main hospital association, um, which is in green, right behind uh, the yellow packing. I believe Mr. Austin and Ms. Taylor are here, uh, both here, if anyone has any questions for them about the contents of those amendments. Okay, um, I guess, can we hear from Ms. Taylor for this to, summarize, to summarize this amendment what we're looking at?
really just a, a language tweaking if the language wasn't clear enough. Um, it's kind of self-explanatory. There's the second change under Part D. Um, is also it was it, the language wasn't inclusive of, of adults. It just it referred to children. So we wanted to make sure um, families of vaccinated adults are being part of part of this conversation as well. Um, the change under H um, was a miscommunication with the drafting office it, that it made it sound like doctors could be sued and that was telling them how to respond to a, a malpractice claim against their office. Um, it, that that is uh, how to help educators if somebody reports a vaccine injury to them where they can go. So what, what they can do um, to call Maine CDC to get guidance on how to, to move forward for evaluating uh, the case. And the last one is, um, as we were going through this and we were looking at the, the medical exemptions, um, they actually dictate what, uh, what <coughs> disorders or what reactions uh, will constitute a valid medical exemption, but they're not into, they're not caught up with science. Um, so we want to take the science, we would codify science into law and say, here's what the science is now, and here's what <coughs> later, we know something else. Um, specifically, uh, the way usually medical exemptions are written is if you have a DPT injury or you have a, a vaccine reaction, you, it, you may only apply to, to get a medical exemption if for that specific vaccine and not others. Um, if you have a sibling die, you still can't get a medical exemption. Um, except now that we know, you know, we've got more information on genetics, so we know, for example, the um, MTHFR gene confers vaccine injury risk, low glutathione, and there's things that we can do ahead of time. So you have families that are, are taking care and doing testing ahead of time um, and know that they have risk instead of, and the way the law is written now is you have to be hurt first before you can get a medical exemption instead of, I know that I have a genetic predisposition that's a problem, or a previous um, ex uh, toxic exposure that'll be a problem for me. So we want, we want to take that out so that <coughs> doctors can make these determinations on current science rather than, you know, whatever the, whatever the reaction was, you know, years ago. Thank you. Um, questions? Representative Hamilton. There is no good medical literature that the, the problems that you identified as being genetic are driving vaccine injuries. There is a growing body of literature, and that's the point, is it, science is changing. So oh, I'll, I'll just stop. Thank you. Uh, additional discussion? Seeing see none, thank, thank you. Oh, we're, 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 all right, okay. thank you, Ms. Taylor. Um, do we want to hear from Jeff Austin? On his, his proposed vote? <laughs> green one. Uh, good morning, Jeff Austin with the Maine Hospital Association. I'm looking at the yellow amendment. Um, I guess our concern is not rooted in DHHS having information about vaccines and health. Our confusion was about vaccines and lawyers. And I'm not sure what the DHHS role is there. I'm not sure that we're dead set against it, but in terms of handouts, inserts from a clinician to a patient in a room, already presuming harm and lawyer's numbers, that was where we were concerned. So looking at the yellow, I just still don't know what a lot of this stuff means, like under F, evaluate vaccine injury claims. That would be an obligation on DHHS. Is that a value <coughs> from a clinical standpoint, whether DHHS agrees that the claim, is, the injury claim is valid? Or is it from a <coughs> legal standpoint that we're talking about claims? So I'm not sure what all that still means. So not knowing what some of that means and what it may sound like. If we're supposed to strike a lot of the stuff against that. It's, no, it's in the yellow. It's what you just reviewed. So, <clears throat> well, can you speak to um, what we've got in this? Yeah, so we strike a lot of that stuff out. Okay. <coughs> um, again, not knowing 
My understanding, Representative Sanderson can correct me if I if I'm wrong. This amendment would strike the language in the bill and replace it um, with with uh, result directing the Department of Health and Human Services to create uh, links on their website <coughs> to, to um, federal resources around this, specifically the Vaccine Compensation Fund. And the VAERS self-reporting system. Yes. Okay. So that's 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 the that's the amendment that's and the motion that's before us. So that's been moved and seconded. Additional conversation. Uh, Representative Hymanson, then Representative Stuckey. Thank you, Representative Hymanson. Thank you, Representative Stuckey. Thank you, Representative Hymanson. Thank you, Representative Stuckey. Thank you,
Thanks. So I'm, I'm just looking at the website now just to see what what's there. And um, there's a main immunization program, parent resources on vaccines. And it does link to a few different websites, vaccinatedbaby.org, why I choose to immunize is another website, meningitis angels, shot and prevention news and views on vaccines, parents with kids with infectious diseases, the American Academy of Pediatrics, families fighting flu, um, and the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia are the current ones. So there is a place to put that. Uh, Representative Stucky. Thank you, Senator. I, uh, I guess I'm, I'm wondering if there's a way to uh, uh, add on to the uh, new idea, the thought that uh, that that fund, uh, the funding of that fund, be shifted from the taxpayer back over to the pharmacy. Well, uh, and I'll just speak to that. I mean, it, since it's a, a, I appreciate the idea, I, I wonder how we execute that considering that this, the fund is established in federal law and the laws around that are established in federal I, law. I, I was kind of in you. <laughs> I know I, I'm always I'm always the one more than happy to, to flout federal law, but it's usually about the things that like we can actually. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe 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 I maybe I could vote for it if we were to send a letter. Uh, uh, send a letter with, to the federal, federal. Send a letter to our congressional delegation with that suggestion. I, I would I would I would support a, a letter if we are. Uh, we're raising questions about the, the, the lack of uh, legal liability in, in these pro existing programs. I, I, I can't speak for enough about myself, but Representative Sanderson. If Representative Stuckey is proposing a friendly amendment that we add that this committee sent a letter to our congressional delegation requesting that this be looked at, I would be happy to accept that friendly amendment to this motion. Then I'll make it. Awesome. <laughs> Accept it. All right. Awesome. All right. There's been a call for a corner caucus. Thank you.
Amended with a letter to the congressional delegation. Is the amendment is the motion on the floor? Is there any discussion on that? Representative I'll just say I, I think this is a thoughtful way to approach this at this point. Um, you know, I don't I don't I cringe every time I hear it about anybody you know having unlimited liability and and, 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 and what the results of that can be uh, very very. You know, I think as state policymakers, we need to do our job, but I'm extremely interested in a lot. I heard a public hearing around this issue um, about way, the, the way citizens interact with this board and, and how it's funded, and um, you know, uh, you know I'm, I'm, I'm interested in learning more about this, and I think this is a really good step, so I want to thank uh, people for bringing forward this amendment. All right. Uh, yes, Representative Hyvinson. Thank you. And, you know, throughout this, I've, I've used that um, medical ethics model that is used so commonly. And this is such a perfect example of everything we deal with in medicine that, that has no real answer to it. And that is, you know, you're trading off autonomy. I want to do everything best for myself and my kid with the herd, which is the justice issue, doing the best for everyone in the community with beneficence, doing as well as you can, doing good for everyone that you want to do well for, and then avoiding harm, non-malfeasance. So, you know, we're always juggling that, and um, this is a perfect example of that. With no right answers, trying to do a little bit for, for each part of those four constructs, so. Additional discussion? Seeing no additional discussion, then without objection, we'll take a vote. All in favor of the motion of ought to pass as amended, please, with a letter, please raise your hand. Say right. a uh, unanimous vote. All right. Um, <coughs> next, we are going to be entering the... We're going to be entering into the realm of medical marijuana. 